Hi there, and welcome to our video lesson on the Ohio Constitution. We're going to be focusing on what we need to know for the Ohio State test. And it's not that complicated. We just need to know what are the issues with the original Ohio Constitution that was written in 1803 and why we need to change it and what those changes are going to be. So let's jump back to the creation of the state of Ohio in 1803. We had to write a constitution in order to be admitted to the Union. And in that constitution, we're going to follow basically the same framework of the constitution itself. And we're going to create a government with three branches of government. The executive branch, of course, with the governor as the head of the state. The legislative branch. In Ohio, it is known as the Ohio General Assembly. It is made up of two houses, so it is a bicameral legislature, just like the U.S. Congress, with a Senate and a House of Representatives. The, the numbers are a little bit different. And we also have an Ohio State Supreme Court, which rounds out our three branches and, uh, of course, is the judicial branch, as you guys all know. So what were some of the problems and issues in the original Constitution of Ohio for uh, 1803? Well, first of all, the Constitution created uh, a General Assembly that was extraordinarily powerful. The governor of the state of Ohio under the original Constitution was very, very weak, and the legislative branch under the Ohio General Assembly pretty much dominated everything. So they were extraordinarily strong. Well, what did they do? What, what made them actually strong? Uh, the legislature was able to appoint all state officials. Normally, this is something that is done either by the governor or by the voters of the state. Uh, but the members of the General Assembly were able to appoint any state official that they wanted to, which opened the door for lots of corruption and lots of bribery, and then maybe not selecting the most uh, responsible people to serve in those positions. The Ohio General Assembly also had the authority to appoint all of the judges throughout the state of Ohio. So again, lots of bribery, lots of corruption, the people of the state of Ohio couldn't elect their judges or their officials. It was left up to the Ohio General Assembly. So what we're looking at here in the state of Ohio is a legislative branch that is way too powerful. Um, and just like we were afraid of having a powerful executive branch uh, and, and felt that a powerful executive could create too many problems, the same thing can happen with you give too much power to the legislature. Uh, as a matter of fact, look at uh, one of the members right here. Ho oh, ho, he is uh, really enjoying all that power uh, that he's got. So it's a little bit scary when uh, the legislative branch has that much authority. One of the other problems that we're going to see under the original Constitution was this kind of crazy law that stated that the Supreme Court of the state of Ohio had to meet and hear and try cases in each county within the state of Ohio. Uh, originally, there were 17 counties. You can count them if you'd like. They're right here on the screen. Uh, but this was really hard to do, given the fact that this is the early 1800s. Roads uh, basically are dirt roads. There's no highways or mass transit systems. There's no trains yet. There's no canals. There's definitely no automobiles for sure. And the Supreme Court had to travel between all of these different counties and meet in at least uh, once in each of those 17 counties. So pretty difficult to do. But as the state of Ohio grows, more and more counties are created till eventually you get to a map that looks like this. And it's nearly uh, impossible for the state Supreme Court to meet in all of these different counties. Um, what was that word that I said? That's impossible. Exactly. That's exactly what the Supreme Court said, that that's impossible. We really can't do this. So that was something that was going to have to be changed. And another major problem for the state of Ohio was the fact that we were in massive debt. By 1850, the state of Ohio was in debt $20 million, uh, which is not a very good thing. Uh, your state cannot be that far in debt. So there's three things we need to fix the powerful legislature, the uh, crazy rule for the Supreme Court, and then also this issue of how do we control the state's debt. So let's start first with uh, the convention itself. So a convention could be called by the voters of the state, and a convention exists outside of the legislature. Um, it's very much separate from that because the legislature is the problem. 
uh, the convention has to solve the problem, so we can't really put the problem in charge of solving the problem, if that makes sense. So the state convention is called, and representatives from all of the different counties and districts go to uh, Columbus originally to hold this convention, but unfortunately, there was a massive outbreak of cholera in Columbus, and people were dying left and right. So out of fear of death, the convention was moved from Columbus to the city of Chillicothe, just a little southwest of Columbus. The uh, guy who's going to run the convention is this gentleman here, William Metal, who was uh, appointed president of the convention. I don't really know anything about him, although he uh, evidently did a good job. So who are the people at this convention? Well, Ohio was a very uh, Democrat-heavy state. But this is the Democratic Party of 1850, not the Democratic Party of 2018. There's a, there's a pretty big difference, so don't get too excited. Uh, but the Democrats were the majority party in the state uh, constitutional convention. And they were made up of two different types of Democrats. So on the left, we have the liberal Democrats, who mostly aligned themselves with issues that dealt uh, or focus on people who were poor in the working class or the farmers. On the right side of the Democratic Party, you would have the conservative Democrats who were pretty much aligned with the wealthy. Uh, they were pretty interested in uh, the wealthy maintaining their power and the rich still being in charge. Um, so the th really, the, I don't want to say the third group, but the, the other political party that we're going to see in Ohio at the state convention are the Whigs. Yes, the Whig Party. Uh, you don't know about the Whigs because they don't exist anymore. The Whigs are going to eventually sort of transform into the Republican Party uh, a little bit later on. So the Whig Party in Ohio uh, is represented at the convention. And since there are not very many of them, the Whigs are going to become what is, what's called a swing vote. So some of the Whigs might support some of the issues of the liberal, liberal Democrats. And some of the Whigs might go over to the conservative liberals. So each side of the Democratic Party was trying to get their issues added to the Constitution uh, the Whigs sort of become the swing vote, depending on if they could get the Whigs to agree with them or not. The Whigs would go vote for their side. So let's start taking a look at what they're going to write into this new constitution. And a lot of it's going to deal with increasing the people's power. Uh, we call that, remember, popular sovereignty. So we've already been able to elect our governor, but one of the biggest changes of the constitution in a way to take away power from the legislature is to give more power to the people. So remember, under the original Constitution, yes, we could elect our governor, but we could not elect our state representatives and officials, and we definitely couldn't elect our judges. That's one of the biggest changes added to the Constitution during the convention. So we're going to create not only the popular election of the governor, which we already had, but also the popular election of state officials and judges. That's going to make those people responsible to the voters, not to the members of the state legislature. So that's creating more popular sovereignty within the state of Ohio. That's a good thing. So we'll give it a check mark. Well, let's talk about voting. It's 1850. It's pre-Civil War. Now, Ohio did not have slavery, but Ohio had freed blacks living in the state of Ohio. Are we going to extend the right to vote to black males? Well, of course we're not. It's 1850. Ohio's a northern state, but that doesn't really mean they're down with equality. So the right to vote for black men is going to be denied. Well, what about women? Same thing. We're going to give them a big red X. We are definitely not prepared to give women the right to vote in Ohio in the year 1850. So uh, who does get to vote? Oh, well, white males over the age of 21, of course. Uh, we've talked about this when we talked about the different amendments to the Constitution. So Ohio had a chance in 1850 to extend the right to vote to free blacks as well as to women, but they chose not to. Uh, let's talk about the courts for a minute. So we know the Ohio State Supreme Court uh, is at the top of our judicial structure. And then we had at the bottom the Common Pleas Court. Well, the courts were overworked. The courts were, courts were overburdened with so many cases, plus all that traveling around stuff, that we're going to need to create a, a next level of court. So... At the top, we have the Supreme Court. Now in the middle, we're going to have these district courts, which is going to be able to take on some of the burden as cases are appealed at the common pleas court level. This is definitely going to be a good improvement uh, that is added to our Constitution. 
Uh, also, we need to take care of this issue of the debt. So debt limits are written into the Constitution. We're not going to go into detail on any of that stuff. Um, but debt limits were written in to prevent the state from going any further into debt than they already were. I believe the original debt limit was set at $750,000, uh, which I'm sure has changed since then. So debt limits, a good thing. Uh, some other things that are going to be added to the Constitution that are good. Um, we're actually going to ban poll taxes. Uh, remember, we talked about poll taxes when we did the amendments. A poll tax is a tax that's used uh, during an election to prevent people from voting. So we're going to abolish poll taxes in the state of Ohio. So that's a good thing. Speaking of taxes, we're going to make sure that we are going to tax everybody at the same rate. So some things that were happening previously were people who were wealthy were actually being taxed at a lower rate than people who were poor. So that's something that's good. Um, and then in terms of expanding the power of the people, um, something called an initiative is going to be added to the Constitution. An initiative is the ability for the people of the states to put an issue on the ballot to be voted on. So if the state legislature is not passing the laws that you want them to, and they're not listening to you, then the people can create an initiative after they get a certain amount of signatures um, and enough people to agree that, yes, this is something we want to vote on, then that initiative goes on to the ballot and the people of the state vote on it to see if they make a law. So what an initiative does is it completely bypasses the state legislature and allows the people to put their own laws on the ballot to be voted on. And that's a pretty awesome thing. So that's a good thing. What else is going to be added? Uh, the people in the state of Ohio are going to be given the power of a recall election. So let's say we elect uh, a governor for the state of Ohio, and the governor decides he's going to do a terrible job. He's horrible at what he does. He's not doing anything to help the state. So the people can actually recall that governor through a special recall election, uh, which means you can replace an elected official if they're not doing a good job. This was very famously done um, in the early 2000s in California. The people of California voted out Gray Davis and voted in Arnold Schwarzenegger as their new governor. Uh, so giving people of the state the power to recall is a good thing. It gives the people more power it gives the, more, uh, the people more authority, and that's what we've kind of talked about all year. So, the newly written Constitution is approved by the convention and then goes on to the citizens of Ohio, who overwhelming, uh, overwhelmingly approved the Constitution, and in 1851 goes into effect. So, those are the things that you need to know. Um, stay tuned for some Ohio State's test review questions about the Constitution, and hope you enjoyed.